Let's march on. Probably our final little bit of career mode here before switching over to Pro Clubs, but I need to get through this transfer window to see exactly how this team is going to be set up. Oh boy, we got another move here. Yeah, I know the overlay's been buggy all night. Ah, Simicass. I love you, but you gotta go. You gotta go. 21.5 out to Sociedad. Again, the board demanded. Apparently, I could have made seven and a half million more. The board demanded that we bring in funds this year. Sassuolo. Of all the teams, Sassuolo. Want Mohamed Salah. Apparently, we can get up to $120 million for the 33-year-old. That would certainly solve all of our money issues. He's only going to get worse. We got to look for up to $120 million. Of all the Italian sides, I did not think it would be Sassuolo. They did offer right in the middle of what we need to aim for. 107. How about 120? All right, they're out. I, I can't. I can't. Like, I, I have to try to get the 124, and we still have time before the window, about half a month. Oxford United, the first team is back in. We're looking for our first win in what is the year, our third match of the season. Well, we're three for three in terms of draws. Not great. Not great. Darby. I'm going to have to change this formation at the end of the month. Real Sociedad, but they want a player exchange. Which is obviously not going to happen. Fuck. This is backfiring tremendously. I don't want Sadiq. No. It's clear you don't have the cash. So just fuck off already. Get out of here. What a horrible start to the season. Jesus. The Rochdale. The Rochdale. Can we please beat them? Boys, for the love of God, figure it out. Okay. Well, aren't we just fine? Really quickly, to try a different version of it. Oh, Fabinho's fine. Nunez, do what you gotta do. All right, we're gonna try that slight difference. It is Swansea next. So the second team is going to be back in, and they were making that work last time. Carabao Cup against Swansea. We're out of the Carabao Cup. Ajax. Want Mohamed Salah. On a player swap. His value has apparently gone up to 129 million. 20 years old, 81 rated, Lars Meyer.
So obviously, either a Youth Academy product or a regen. Lars Meyer. That honestly wouldn't be the worst deal in the world, but we are kind of good at center back, so I don't really see where I'd play him. How do you feel about 128 million? Ajax have accepted $128 million from Mohamed Salah. We'll see if they agree to terms. As we look to move on from Mo before the window. <laughs> There's no way Celtic can afford him at this stage. There's no way. There's no way. Good luck, boys. Good luck. You don't have a hope in hell. Especially because I'm going to be offering uh, the same thing. $128 million. Yeah, no shit. Why'd you even come to my office? Don't waste my time. Don't waste my time. Is it going to happen? We're going to sell Salah and Robertson in the same fucking window. One more attempt here against Shrewsbury. We have five points through five matches. We finally won! We did it! Fabinho and Trent Alexander-Arnold. We finally won. As we wait to see if Mo Salah indeed goes to Ajax on deadline day, it's confirmed for $128 million. We say goodbye to Mohamed Salah. He's off to Ajax. We were ordered by the board to make money. We do what we have to do to make money and try to move the team on to a new era. Van Dyke, Salah, Robertson all out in this window. That sound you hear is my heart shattering. Apparently I could have made even 23.5 uh, more million dollars off of that. But needless to say, budget-wise, we're looking pretty good. <laughs> all of a sudden now, budget-wise, we're looking okay. Hell, at this point, we could spend money if we needed to. And uh, let's be honest, with how this season's going, we're going to need to spend money. Emotional damage. $153 million of profit. It shows us at $328 million. So in general, it was just profit as in. So really, we didn't have to sell everybody. Robertson or Mo would have had to go. Probably Mo. But still, that moves Trent up. Then we would have had to spend money on Trent's replacement. It made sense and still makes sense. Right now, we're ninth in this league, by the way. So we're not totally boned. We do still have to sign a player under the crucial role. So here's the deal. Worst case scenario. If we talk about like flipping this team back to what it is. We just find a big time right wing. And honestly, after how the start of the season's gone, it wouldn't be the worst idea now. Like, left back wise, we could recall Nilsson and just let him go for it because the guy's going to be a stud. Go with center backs, Bastoni and Kanate, have Gomez and Sepp as the second choice options. We were smart to hang on to Fabinho. I think, I mean, if that's talking about the profit, if we go over to scout instructions, I had world-class wingers previously selected. So we could find the Mo replacement right here, right now. Like Musa Diaby. I mean, the problem is, obviously, this guy's going to be expensive as hell. But we have to look at doing it to uh, hit that crucial role. I mean, Bergwin's probably going to be playing with uh, with Mo at Ajax. I, I mean, fucking Mohamed Salah just went to Ajax, for God's sakes. 
Cody Gakpo's out there. I'd want him to switch sides. I'm going to guess an 85 overall is like the minimum. I'm going to guess that's the minimum for somebody to be... Uh, For someone to be considered uh, for a crucial role. That's what I was trying to think of there. I'm going to go up to Kiesa. I mean, Gakpo from PSV, his contract's coming due anyway. This is Corona. Yenemi Pino from Villarreal. Uh, Alberto Malario. Malero. St. Maximin's out there. Kingsley Coleman. Yannick Carrasco is a bit too old. Emil Smith Rowe could bring him back to England. Marcus Rashford is out there at PSG, but we won't take him away from PSG. Neymar's out there too. Muted, you're a handsome devil. You're a scholar, sir. Thank you. All right, let's see. Oh, wow, Liao really stepped up in terms of how good this guy is. His contract's up in 11 months as well. Christian Pulisic is out there. Could bring in the American. I'm not going to want to pay what the fuck that asking price is going to be. I'll tell you that right now. And there are a couple of other dudes. That's got to be like the messy regen right there. Ilyas Ali. That's got to be the messy regen. Oh, what would be most unlikely company that could possibly make a good hockey game? The most unlikely company? Konami? <laughs> My most unlikely company that could possibly make... Oh, that could possibly make a hockey game, though. Um, 2K. <laughs> the most unlikely company that could possibly make a good hockey game. Um, fucking... I don't know, man. I don't know. What's your most unlikely company that could possibly make a good hockey game to rival EA? <laughs> FX. EA. <laughs> you know, when you put it that way. Uh, let me go back. So our objectives here. Sign two crucial players, make 153 million profit. So in theory, we've made 328 million in profit, right? You're minus 153 million off of that. I got 175 million to work with, and then throughout the season should technically still be profitable. I think we abandoned ship on our three at the back strategy and we look to bring in somebody here that could play the role we need them to play. Pulisic would be around 125 million. Leal would be around 106, which is hilarious because he's better. Work rate's not quite as good, but damn. Uh, Emil Smith-Rowe would be around 85. Lair would be around 99, really 100 mil. Pena would be around 76. Gakpo around 71. And then Noah Lang around 60. So obviously the best player of the bunch, I mean, Leao is incredible. Hmm. I mean, I think any of these guys would be fucking solid, obviously, right? The most badges belong to Liao at this point. Medium low, I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad. High, high work rate for Smith Rowe, though. Pino's got high low as well. Let's just see what the price would be. I mean, $125 million for Pulisic does not make sense. So Pulisic is out. 106 million there. 85, 99.8, which is understandable. 76. 
any of these guys really would work. I think I'm going to rule out Gakpo just for the sole reason if he doesn't have right wing as a secondary position. That dude's a right mid out of the gates. Maybe I shouldn't have taken that other guy out, but it is what it is. What would the offer be for Rafael Leao? Staying around 107 million, which would be within our budget. In terms of a player swap, I'm still good with that two striker set. Trent's technically our right back now. So if Trent's our right back, Dusan Tadic doesn't really have much of a much of a place here. Actually, no, I guess he does behind Diaz and Carvalho with Trent. Okay. Midfield wise. That's all well and good. Center back wise. Yeah, we don't really have we have no fullbacks left on the roster, apparently. It would just have to be money. 105 million. They want 112. How about 106? Link noted. We'll check very soon. 106 million for our Salah replacement. He's 26 years old, a 90 overall. And again, we should still be profitable. And this will allow us to drop back. To a four at the back. It gets Leao into a crucial role. A little bit of wheeling and dealing. In this window before the start of season four. A little bit of silly season. But this was the best bang for our buck in terms of the best overall player. Who really wasn't that much more expensive. We're done. We have a brand new star man right wing. It's not quite Mohamed Salah anymore. Signs the footballs for the kids. Rafael Leao. 106 million from AC Milan, which is honestly a dirt cheap deal for him. We accomplish our goal for the season. Our profit's still looking great. We got an A-rated deal for that. And uh, after the incredibly slow start to our season, thank God we're going to be able to go back to four at the back because clearly three wasn't going to work. So now we still got to sign uh, two players out of the academy this year. Streak of three uh, clean sheets, lol. We got the veteran player, win the FA Cup, and the financial terms are done. Awesome. Awesome. And honestly, the profit, it's not even the profit margin, it's just the outright profit. So that's perfect. So we are going to be able to switch. We just totally misread what the hell that profit ask was for. So technically, did we have to sign Andy Robertson? Did we have to do this? Did we have to do that? No. <laughs> As it turns out, it is worth noting we still got $136 million. But those were players we were going to move on from sooner rather than later. Salah, Van Dyke, we were considering it. Really, the one casualty is Robertson a year or two early. So we are good at goalkeeper. Left back. Nilsson and Beck. Recall the boys. Either that or we see if there's a veteran left back out there and a different left back that we can go out and find. But we might turn it over to the youth in that regard just because we have uh, had to kind of turn things upside down this season compared to what I thought. But Jordi Alba's out there. And Adama Traore, not that one, but... So we could bring in Jordi Alba for the old man squad. Is there... Is there a good left back? If I were to search for any position world class whose contract is close to expiring, defensively, start off at the bottom here, Ferlamendi from Milan, Angelino... Man, Tagliafico's already that old, huh? I mean, obviously not IRL. Matip's still at Juventus. Jose Gaia, David Alaba. 
There are short-term solutions out there. But you could argue it's just worth knowing that our young player is on the team and playing. United are pretty well set up at left back. Damn. Ben Chilwell at Chelsea. Hernandez, Alejandro Grimaldo. Matthew Hernandez is unbelievable. New Johansson Devil for anyone that did download it, by the way. Uh, get that daily. Ait Nuri is out there as well. Robin Gossens as a free agent. New Jew about ready for uh for some clubs very soon. I'm just finishing up this transfer window. Honestly, I think we turn it over to the youth. Why spend the money? 15 minutes or so. That's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I think we run with Nilsson and Beck. I mean, Beck's 23. He's not going to get that much better. We're going to run with one of our academy signings. I am Vin Nilsson as our left back and hope it works out. He is a 73, has potential to be special. 90 plus potential. And then development wise, we will uh, just turn him into a natural left back as opposed to a wing back. We'll also recall Owen Beck. And he will be the second choice option. His contract is up at the end of the year. So I am going to look to re-sign him really quickly. So Beck will go nowhere. So we do get weaker at left back, but the sacrifice is that we allowed ourselves to see just what the hell was going on. In terms of how this team could manage a three at the back formation. The answer is we couldn't. So our right back. Well, yet again. Did I totally just like blow past Trent? I must have. I did. Let's make sure Trent is properly back in right back form. We'll recall Connor Bradley from Fenabache. Be the backup. His deal's up at the end of the year as well. We'll delegate that renewal. We'll also turn you into a natural right back. So I'd hope we wouldn't be sunk by one left back, you know, being a real position of need. So Fabinho at CDM. Let's honestly recall Tyler Morton. It's more important that Lepinant continues to get better. Recall Tyler Morton. He'll be the backup for the year. Center mid. We need Florian Vertz to fully switch over to center mid here. Since we're not going to run a cam. 569 weeks. Well, fuck me. Fuck me. Never mind. <laughs> God damn it, Enda. <laughs> All right. So in the midfield, though, it is Bellingham and Verts, Jones and Clarkson, Henderson as the depth option. We need Rafael Leao to be switched over to right wing. Two weeks to do it. Perfect. He'll be going fucking nowhere. So it'll be Diaz and Tadic. Leao on that right hand side with Carvalho. Firmino behind Jota, Arnautovic behind Nunez. Let's go. Let's go. We're good. We are good. We have our set plan. Um, that's already changed three times in one transfer window. I thought we'd make a hell of a lot more progress than we have, but joke's on me. <sighs> 569 makes you be retired before such a... Yeah, literally 10 years. <laughs> This game can be a bit ridiculous sometimes, considering it was already a secondary position of his, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? God damn. Looks like we'll have no other business this window. So again, the big losses, Robertson, Salah, but we sold both for over $100 million. We also uh, used $50 million in Virgil van Dyke to bring in a star center back. So, like I said, the only change is that Andy Robertson pretty much got sold a year earlier, pretty much two or three years earlier, and Virgil and Sala got sold probably a year earlier 
than I would have actually sold them. We get our scouting reports. We'll also see how much money was spent. We start off in Brazil with Diogo Alves. Worth a million already. Yes, sir. Garcia, De Sousa, Alessandro Alves. Close. Another Alves, Alessandro Piera. We'll sign him. He's over 500K. Honestly, since Muted pointed that out, I'm like, you know what? That is a better way to do it, to make sure some of these guys go to different academies. But we'll make sure we still get the best of the best. So Brazil looks up a little bit. France with Volta. Not Volta. Uh, Gillet. The Hillet. France is, uh... France is still struggling a little bit. France is still struggling a little bit. And then Estonia. With Jan Harma. Tomas Sar. Close to being signing worthy. And Kabin. So our academy right now has to look fucking phenomenal in terms of the talent. It does. Uh, worth noting, Alves. High-low work rate, definitely better than as either... Well, I mean, shit, with those stats. Oh, good those stats. you! I'm just... I'm, I'm going to go with three. Thank you for the follow. Um, you could argue left back. You could argue center back. Be a little bit shorter. I'm thinking CDM for this guy. I'm thinking CDM for this guy as opposed to left back, right back. If it'll let me switch him. Replace the Brazilian with another Brazilian, you know? Uh, Volta. Has pace. He's short. He's, he's definitely a right back. Get him onto a strong side foot. Two weeks to switch him over. Uh, Coit Coitz Rutli. Six foot six. Jesus Christ. You're a center back, sir. Low high work rates. Decent pace. What the hell are you doing at CDM, son? You are a center back. Uh, Injlik Rutare. And again, we're allowed to sign two guys this year. This dude at five foot five, definitely a right wing. Definitely a right wing, and his uh, rating should go up higher once he switches. And then Alessandro Pajera, five eight, medium medium. Can't really defend. Isn't the most physical, but has a decent shot. You could argue Cam or center forward, but the work rates. Probably put him at center forward. So we'll see what the uh, overall switches are for these guys once they're in a more suitable position for how they actually look. We'll see what they end up looking like. We do have a training day. I want to sim at least our next game as we're going to switch back to a four at the back. It's Charlton Athletic. And I'm hoping we uh, can start getting some wins here. <laughs> Especially because we have Spurs coming up in the league, which is always concerning. We have been in the same division as Tottenham for all four seasons. Not the hotel chain. All right. So. Oh, good. We got a bunch of players out on international duty. That's that's lovely. But striker, center forward, left center mid, right center mid, right wing, left wing. Uh, let's go left back, left center back, right back, right back. Cool. So, yep, we're going to have a lot of players out on international, including Nilsson. Nilsson's already out on international duty. Jesus. Kid's 18 years old, 73 rated. He's already out on international duty. That shit's nuts. Yeah, we have... We have a lot of fucking players out on international duty right now. God damn. God damn. How the hell are we going to handle this? Let's just say Trent would be here. Let's get Jude here. I was thinking, though, of having a CDM again, so I'm thinking actually the 4-3-3. Our original formation... If we have a CDM, 
I I don't know, man. Nunez or Jota, it's it's pretty much going to be whoever's playing better at the time gets to be the starter, and the others kind of our super sub. It's pretty much what it looks like. But uh, it is a good thing that we signed those veterans because uh, how the hell does Bastoni not get an international call up then, given those circumstances? Owen Beck is going to be our uh, left back in this next game. Our goalkeeper is going to be Asmir Begovic because both of our other goalkeepers are on international duty. Well, I said I wanted to get us kind of a look at what this team is going to be, but that fucking results of the test have determined that was a lie because holy shit. Like we got nothing. We have nobody available. This is absurd. Fabinho can't play, so we'll have Morton at CDM. Jesus. I think we're good. It's the same shame Jota can't play the midfield, but this is where we're at. This is going to be a weird one. We'll let Darwin get this next start. This really scuffed team against Charlton Athletic. Now, if we don't get a win here, I can understand it, but I'm going to be disappointed. Three at the back was not for us. Fabio Carvalho, Luis Diaz, the wingers getting the goals. Turns out three at the back really wasn't for us. <laughs> God damn. Uh, Nilsson, what's up, Chief? You're 100% going to play. Like, literally, you are the Andy Robertson replacement. You are the guy. Oh, fuck it, Spurs. We're still in sixth. Two wins, five draws, no losses. Uh, 11 points, so... You know, we're not totally boned at the moment. All right, let's see. Let's see, let's see. As we get this properly reestablished... Okay, let's get Allison in goal. We have Begovic where he is. The defense. Bastoni. Ibrahima Kanate. Center back. Gomez. Left back. Nilsson. With Bradley on the bench as a back option. Honestly, what we're going to do is put these two kind of at the back of things. So I don't have to focus on them as much. We won the last game with Nunez up top. Let's try Jota. Let's get Leao on the right. Fabinho's in. Wirtz is in. Jude Bellingham is in. That is our starting team this year. So, I mean, Bastoni in for Virgil, Leao in for Sala, but Nilsson's going to be starting over Robertson. And if we find out that he can't really get it done, then it's not really all that difficult to start scouting out different options in terms of better left backs. For this upcoming January. And actually that's the big thing. In terms of how we can go uh, set up our scouts. That is the number one thing that we need. Position left backs. Find me world class left backs. Find me promising left backs. Find me first team quality left backs. Just get me all the best left backs. Can this new look team get a W? Against Tottenham on the road. Harry Kane is still with Spurs. So is human son. This is a tough game. I'd take a draw here. I'll take that too. Let's fucking go. Luis Diaz. Luis Diaz. Fabinho. Wins it. We beat Tottenham. And right when you think the season's gone. Well as it turns out. We're still in seventh. But we're only three points back of Arsenal. A god-awful start. And we're only three points back of Arsenal and Colchester. 
So that little experiment, it might cost us at the end, but in the short term, it actually doesn't look that bad, which is pretty nice. And we can already confirm the uh, Rafael Leao position change, so he will be a natural right wing where he will be playing. Nilsson, you're killing it, buddy. Don't worry, I'm going to talk you up so much. Because you're our guy. You're our dude. Like the rare academy player for us at this stage. And there we go. That's the other thing I was waiting for. Speaking of academy options, let's see how much these guys change. So Walter was a 56 left back. He'll still be a 56 right back. Rootley, the 6'6 CDM, and we're changing to a center back. He is a 55. He is now a 56. Uh. And then there's Rutare, who we're just having him change sides. He goes up to a 57. So, I mean, right now, Indrik is our potential top option, if not Diogo Alves. We gotta wait to see what Alves is gonna look like, though, because we were changing uh, spots for him, too. What a weird night for this career mode. We've made a hell of a lot of changes. <laughs> like, a hell of a lot of changes. We'll run with that same team. Bristol Rovers. Help keep me in good spirits, man. Help keep me in good spirits. Fuck yeah. Leao's first goal for the club. Jota scores as well. We love the Portuguese. Move over, Wolves. We love the Portuguese. Portuguese. 